This is Dave Arnold, your host of Cooking Issues, coming to you live from the heart of Manhattan at Rockefeller Center in Newsstand Studios. Joined as usual behind me, I got uh, John. John Hull, how you doing? Doing great, thanks. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, everything good? Yeah, yeah, can't complain. Yeah, rocking yeah. the panels here. We have uh, Joe Hazen, how you doing? I'm doing very well, man. Great to see you. Yeah, unfortunately, we do not have uh, our other uh, engineering team on right now, uh, Jackie Molecules, because he's sick. He's got some sort of stomach bug. Go figure. But we do have, uh, from Vancouver Island, Quinn, our upper, upper, left, left hey. correspondent. How you doing there, Quinn? I'm doing all right. Yeah, and I think ba- back in L.A. or still in Portland, Nastasia Lopez? No, I'm in L.A. I'm in L.A. All right, cool. All right. Uh, all right, and that's the, that's, the, that's the crew. But before we uh, do chit-chat, we're going to do the new style and introduce our special guest. We have Caroline Schiff, pastry chef extraordinaire at Gage and & Tolner and uh, author of the book The Sweet Side of Sourdough. You might know her as at Pastry Schiff on Instagram, which I was saying earlier is a fantastic, uh, what, what is that called? A handle? What is that called? Handle. Yeah, handle. it's a handle. It's Thank like you. CB radio, like a handle. Yeah. What's yeah. your 20? Like, you know what I mean? Like that ten, kind of stuff. 10-4. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, I mean, I used to say. legitimately have a CB radio oh, when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah, and the truckers would be like, kid, get the hell off <laughs> this radio. Like messing with trucker routes all over the country. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, kids are useless. We're useless. <laughs> you know, I shouldn't say that, you know. Uh, anyway, so uh, now's the portion of the show where we all say whether anything interesting to us, uh, in- interesting happened uh, last week. Oh, anything yeah. interesting. By the way, you were supposed to come on before and we yes. had to cancel, so I apologize. And thanks for, for coming on, you know, despite the fact that we had to cancel the first time around. Like, I think it was basically day of we had to cancel. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. I had COVID. It's, oh, yeah, rocking rockin the cron there. Yeah. 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 Was that your first time? No, that was the second time. We mm-hmm. actually had our first bout, a uh, very light bout of it, as soon as we came out of the hospital after having our son. Oh, touch of the COVID. Touch. Mm. A, little, a little touch of the COVID. So what do you, what do you guys got? Nastasia, let's go to that coast. Anything good? Uh, no, I saw Jack last night, so I wonder what it was that got him. Uh, you know what that means. In a couple of minutes, you'll be set on spray. Set on spray. I love it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I like, all, uh, like, uh, Nastasia and I love it when the other one gets food poisoning because we get to discuss, uh, our, uh, all orifice, uh, evenings. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, right, Stas? Yeah. You love it when yeah. I get, you love it when I get yeah. a, a food poisoning. And, uh, you know, surpri- you'd think I would get it more with how uncareful I am with what I eat. You know what I mean? Anyway. The worst was when you were in Detroit, I think. We won't say which place. But you had some chicken. <laughs> Well, that wasn't just poisoning. Like, like I woke up, almost died. Remember, I like choked to death. Yeah, yeah cause it was it was so dry. I woke up, and then like we like we were like joking that we were gonna like that he was literally trying to murder us with uh, with choking <laughs> choking on that chicken, choking on like well, that <laughs> sounds real bad. This sounds real bad. <laughs> sounds real bad. I'm gonna nip nip, nip it n- nip it right there. All right. Uh, hey, John, I haven't spoken to you since uh, you had your first Thanksgiving service at the restaurant. How, how crappy was that? That was not fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever want to do a special event oh, ever again. Oh, gosh. So much work that goes into it. So few people ordered. It was just, like, depressing. Yeah, not, dude. Not worth it. Yeah. Such yeah. a pain. Yeah. And just even resetting the kitchen the next day took, like, an hour and a half. It was really... It was, I don't, yeah, whatever. Yeah, sensitive subjects, not fun. Don't want to do again, but obviously we'll have to. All right, so Caroline, yeah. for pastry, I mean, if if if, it, if anyone's gonna order a pastry, they're definitely gonna order one on Thanksgiving, uh, no, Valentine's Day. Is that is it? Do you hate it still, or what? Is, how does it feel as a pastry chef? Um, I, you know, I hate it in the sense that there's this expectation of like it's got to be a chocolate dessert, it's got to be red, like whatever. But like, you know, it's it's always fun to be able to like do something different and like riff on the original menu a little bit. Um, But this year we just, you know, I find at Gage and Tolner, like people just want to come and order off of the Gage and Tolner menu. Like they get very excited to just like have that experience that they've been reading about. So um, this year I just did, we just did these cute little like takeaway gifts, these like two little coffee cakes and they were different. So the idea was that like, you would get into an argument Ooh. with your significant other oh. over who got which one. So you think the average person doesn't be like split it in half and be like, you take one. I would hope that 
they just caused fights. See, that's what, I, think, <laughs> that's what I, I want people to fight over the coffee cake or the blood orange pound cake. Uh, blood orange know, pound cake. Fight yeah. Blood orange pound death. cake. Blood orange pound cake. Yeah, but the coffee cake had a lot of streusel on it. Uh, and then, you know? All right, Joe, which one would you go for? Uh, probably, <sighs> coffee cake sounds my, that's my uh, favorite. Yeah. But I do love blood orange. Yeah. 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 And a pound cake. Oof. Yeah, one was a, one was like an olive oil pound cake, and like, and one was a, you know. I've been reading recipes for pound cake recently, where they whip the egg whites to get some of the stuff, so you don't have to do as much creaming. What do you think? Bad idea? Mm. No, no, you could do that. Yeah, mm. I like that. Uh, what about you, Stas? What are you gonna go for? Blood orange. Blood orange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we would get in a hard fight. No, she yeah. would just take it. If we were at a restaurant, <laughs> the Stas would just take it and be like, "Here, I'm giving you this one. Aren't I nice?" That's what she would do. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, so my regret is like they were a take home, so we didn't get to witness mm. any fights. You need that you camera know? like that. Yeah. Like that glitter bomb guy. Like, what about you, Quinn? What's your what's your call? What do you what are you on? Uh, probably the pound cake also. Yeah, wow. See? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See, okay. I was hoping you would write little mean messages. Like mean Valentine's Day fortune I, cookies. Yeah. Like you get nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Next year, we're going to do that or just like write things that like incite, you know, yeah. really incite an argument like, you know, I don't know. Why do you always take so long to respond to my text messages? That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like yeah, really yeah. like just like get it all out there. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Get people to talk about their Or what if you just their issues. write something ominous, ominous on the package like, careful. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? <laughs> yeah, 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 right? <laughs> like, you're like, what? What? But I think you need to mess with people on Valentine's Day. You have it, to. Let's face it, they're not your regulars. No. No offense to people who go out on Valentine's Day, but <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. It's just a ridiculous holiday. You yeah. know, you got to have a little fun with it. Although I have to say, I did st start dating my wife on a Valentine's Day. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> but it was by mistake. It was just, it just so happened. <laughs> by mistake. It, I mean, it was one of those, you know, have you ever gone on a 24-hour date? And yeah, the, the yeah. Sec, second half yeah. of the 24 hours was Valentine's Day. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 It was a mistake. It was a mistake. <laughs> and it was, it was romantic. It was snowing. That's cute. Yeah. All right. All right. You're like, you're <laughs> and like, it worked out. You're like, no, no. Yeah, yeah. It, that, was, that was 30, what was it? 92. So that was 31 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but we don't really celebrate it that much because you know once you have once you have the two kids and the two dogs and like you know life and all that you're like nah, 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 nah. we put up we make little things like with the nieces and, and nephews yeah little godsies you know they mm. go around the house you know what yeah. I mean yeah 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 uh, if you're listening live it means you're listening on Patreon and you can call your questions in to nine one seven four one zero fifteen zero seven that's nine one seven four one zero fifteen zero seven any pastry or non related pastry or sour sourdough questions any kind of question uh, baked Alaska question for us your baked Alaskas are banana lamb and ding dong what is it with those Thank like you. with those peaks like what made you want to do that and then like they've gone crazy people love that crap I right? know well I wanted it to look like me like I wanted it to be just like you know like my hair is always in this like ridiculous whimsical updo and I just like standing there like piping on meringue is just so not my style to like have them be super uniform I was like no I want this thing to just look like this like whimsical like swoosh of a of meringue of a snowy mountain I don't know and you have to um, do torch to get it all around so that because they get in those crevices because they're yeah. like real tall peaks yeah 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 and I mean and that's we just like you know, you know I mean? we blow torch to order and it's really fun it's my favorite thing to plate yeah it's the best yeah, yeah you ever uh so how hard do you have to get that how hard do you get the ice cream in the middle of that thing or do you not even worry about it because it's not being torched that long are you actually baking it or are you just like torching no out? we're we're just torching it so it's like it's a three-day process. So, you know, you make the ice creams one day, then you churn them and layer them the next day. And then those set and freeze, like, really, really solid overnight, ideally. And then they get—I do them in these, like, giant slabs, and then they get portioned into these big squares. It's, like—it's ridiculous. It's almost like a pint of ice cream per— mm -hmm. But, you know, it's hey, for two. Yeah. It's for two. Yeah. Or whatever. Or one. Are you going to judge? No, never. Yeah, okay. When yeah. was the last time you didn't eat the whole pint of ice cream? Me? I mean, like, I'm not a good, I'm not, I used to, I used to polish off a, I've in my life eaten a Vermonster myself. There you go. It's 20, whatever, it's 20 scoops. 
easy. I was a kid, though. Yeah. Like I said, kids are useless. Kids are crazy. Yeah, anyway. So. <laughs> but um, then it, you know, so the ice cream is really, really frozen solid. But then it, for dinner service, because we're we're making the meringue, we're making the meringue to order, but it, it's pretty quick. And then we're just like swooshing it on and blow torching it. And it's leaving the kitchen. I actually want it to be like kind of soft. So that way when somebody goes to eat it, it's not like impossible to get through. So that freezer for dinner service is set like a little warmer. So they'll actually be like soft and nice and tempered. And you're doing, uh, are you doing like a, a raw sugar meringue? Are you putting cooked sugar into it or what? We, so we tried like every different way to do it. And we figured out that the best, most efficient way that's also like, it looks the best. It's it's beautiful. Is a uh, French meringue, so egg whites, raw sugar, and we do that to order. Um, just in a little. It's certainly easier. <laughs> KitchenAid. And going and, Swiss. Yeah. Well, we we tried making like big batches of Swiss meringue, you know, at the beginning of service, but then it was like, what do you do if you run out? Are you making more Swiss meringue during service? Like, no, that's crazy. Um, so anyway, it was like a lot of troubleshooting in the beginning, and now we just, it's like down to a science. It's so yeah, fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, pe- 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 looks great. I mean, next time I go, I didn't get- Pete th- Wells says it looks like an overfed house cat, which I- Is that- That's good. Thought was a compliment. Yeah. I mean, first of all, <laughs> okay. uh, you know, look, I, I, I love Pete, right? I mean, he was very good to me bef- when he was at Food and Wine, you know, back when mm-hmm. he used to just kind of write these kind of awesome columns for Food and Wine. And he lives in Brooklyn. He actually he lives does, yeah. very close to where Gage and Tolner is. Yeah. Not that I've been to his house, but my friends is friends with him. He's a no. He's a he's a fan, and he comes to Sunken Harbor yeah. Club. Oh, Sunken Harbor, fantastic! fantastic. My you favorite, were just there. favorite. Yep. Love, love. But uh, yeah, for for freaking what's it called? Uh, Bobby Burns. I, oh, did you come? I was no. Well, so I wasn't invited, right? <laughs> Everybody was invited to Burns. No, no, no. no. It just I, sold out. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, but like, I happened to be at the bar bar. Oh and, yeah, yeah. And Cindy came in. Was like, Cindy was like, "Hey, where was Bobby Burns?" I'm like, "Oh, really?" And so I just hung out in the hallway, waited for the piper because yeah. I love bagpipes. Who doesn't love bagpipes? But it, people who don't understand. Yeah, they're like, "Oh, your bagpipes. I don't like bagpipes." It's like when that thing goes, you have to hold your butt together to stop yourself from pooping <laughs> because it just rattles your whole body. They're amazing. Yeah, it's wild. You know what I mean? They're so cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I love those things. Are you, do you know about the beefsteak dinner that's happening tonight? I've heard, I've, I, I, uh, Wondrich mentioned it on his, mm-hmm. uh, Dave Wondrich mentioned yep. it on his uh, Twitter account, but you know, I don't really go out much unless yeah. I'm going out. Yeah. Yeah. Which is rare. I need to go out more. Once yeah. everyone's out of the house, maybe I'll go. Well, we're doing just, I feel like we're getting into this, like, we're doing all these, like, cool events now. So, you know, we did the, you know, Robbie Burns night. In we're that doing, private room you have upstairs. Yeah. The beefsteak dinner. I feel like we're, like, getting into this groove of, like, these really fun ticketed events where, like, they're a little nostalgic and kind of historical, which is like a big thing for us, obviously, because yeah, yeah. the space is so historical. Yeah. Um, and you told her no history on that yeah, thing. Yeah, just none, yeah, none. Yeah, just, yeah. you know, went up yesterday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we're, I, there's a lot of stuff coming up, so we'll we'll let you know. Yeah. And then hopefully, you know, yeah. you can I mean, it's close to a, me. Have a big night out. It's right, right across the river. You're right across the, right across the river. Yeah. yeah. Um, that PDR... I'm good to see that. Glad to see that you're getting good use out of the PR yeah. because it, I absolutely hate retasking your real restaurant because then mm-hmm. you're, it sucks. I know. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But, and like that space has been so, um, it's proven to be really versatile because like, you know, we can rent it out for these private events, whatever. We can host our own events, but then just on a regular night, we just open it up as the dolphin bar. Oh. Yeah. It looks like a fancy weasel's living room. Yeah. Yeah. Which is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. How was the haggis, by the way? Did you have any? <laughs> no, no. But um, I saw. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. but we got in the well, It's basically whole... oatmeal plus. You could do a vegetarian haggis. Yeah, they do. They do. Vegetarian haggis, um, which is a total oxymoron. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it was really amazing. I mean, Chef Adam really did it from like traditional start to finish. He got in the stomachs. We, you know, mm-hmm. did the whole thing with the oats and all it was really really beautiful hey speaking then, of speaking of bagpipes hey you went to college in scotland i did so I is did. that where you got your love of the pipes or? i yeah 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 because they they you just hear them every day 
There's just always somebody walking around <laughs> playing the bagpipes. I own a relatively decent set of pipes, and I kept on getting so. I mean, do you do you know do you do pipes at all? Or you, I I don't. I'm just a, just a fan. All right. You know? So you know the thing that you play is called a chant. Like the thing that you practice with is called a chanter, right? Mm-hmm. And the things and that's where you make the notes, right? And then you have the drones and the, right. the bag. So like a couple of times in my life, I have taken a lot of lessons with the chanter, where like I would get close to actually being able to like fire up the pipes, and it just I just never got there. Once I f- I fired it up once in my house. This is when I lived on 38th Street a long time ago. And Jen, my wife, was like, nope. <laughs> nope. Absolutely not. No, because they're loud as all get out. And yeah. so, like, you, you need to get to that proficiency where you can do it in the subway. Mm-hmm. Like, once you're at subway level proficiency, yep. then, you know, whatever. Go down there and, you know. Yeah, walk but, around subway stations, play but, with bagpipes. You know, when you're 30, 40, 50, right, which is those are the times I've tried to do it in my mm-hmm. life, right? when you're 30, when you're 40, when you're 50. And I don't know, it's just maybe it's too late to get good in subway good enough, you know? I don't know. I don't know. I would, time-wise. you should, you know, maybe, maybe you should take this year to, to practice and get really good and then come to Burns Night. It's a dr- about a year from now and really surprise everybody. If existing conditions had stayed open, we were we we started doing a, a Burns night with um, Grey Goose, interestingly. Mm. And uh, they had a piper come over and we were like, yeah, what if we like got piping lessons, like pre-service piping lessons? Yeah. And then we just got one or two people who are interested just to get good enough. The problem with most pipers is that for in terms of what I need is they're extremely traditional. So mm-hmm. what they don't want is to teach you to play one tune and out. They want you to become a piper. Yeah. And they don't want to waste their time training someone who's just going to be like a one and done. If I ever held the pipes in my hand, in my, well, my whatever, in my, you know, my arm once and played a passable tune, I could die happy from piping, right? I mean, <laughs> I'd be, I'd be good. I don't need to like, you know, I don't need to be some like p master, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you know. You know, yeah. e- even even just you know playing you know long way to the top if it's you know if you want to rock and roll, which is the easiest pipe song in the world to play. <laughs> you know, it's just, you know nee, 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 nothing. You know what I mean? Anyway, enough on piping. Enough on piping. Anyway. Uh, oh, by the way, if you're not listening live on Patreon, how do they do that, uh, John? patreon.com slash cooking issues you should join we get a bunch of awesome discounts with people we work with i believe there is one with kitchen arts and letters in the works quinn can tell us more about that but get to uh oh you know awesome you get to ask questions before anyone else all these awesome perks uh go check it out patreon.com slash cooking issues yeah 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 Oh, and uh, by the way, a little another uh, bookkeeping note that BMW Artificial Intelligence podcast that I was on, I think that's coming up this week. They're putting mine on. That uh, podcast is called Changing Lanes. and But now everyone, do you read this New York Times article? Well, I listened to the Daily about the AI. Yeah. And, I mean, it's crazy. Nanny. It's nanny. It's nanny poo. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, being interviewed by one— and. But the, the 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 thing is, is that uh, I forget the the reporter's name who who did that stuff. But I was, they were pretty, they were being aggressive in trying to get this AI to say freaking nutty business. Right. I wasn't. I, now I feel like, like a chump. Like the AI was like, I'm in love with you. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Crazy, crazy. He's stuff. like, help me buy a rake. He's like, yeah, here's the rake. But I'm in love with you, and you don't <laughs> love your wife. You love me. <laughs> anyway, I was like, wow, that's you know, I was just talking. Like, you know, petroleum smells with right. with D because turns out I'm a chump. But you can hear me be a chump with an AI. But yeah, it's a, it's a different world. It's pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, all right. All right. Oh, let's talk about should we get questions or book? Book? Questions. Book. So the book you started, book, basically you said you went on a sourdough kick like everyone else. I'm just, you know, quoting mentally from your introduction, yeah. which I read yeah. all. You started, uh, and then you were like, I'm sick of making the same loaves of bread every day. You don't talk like this, but you're right here. They know what you talk but, like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could if you want. What do you call it? You, you call know. it bread, uh, what do you call it? Bread fatigue. Bread it fatigue? It was, um, I, I mean, it was like overload. It was, yeah. It was fatigue, overdose, Yeah, I mean, overload. I've been, I don't do the full sourdough. Look, just get it out now. I use spent plus yeast. I'm a, I'm a, it's not spent, but like I, I feed it once a week and keep it in the fridge. And then use I use it once a week with yeast. As like, a, as like the, the leavener and you're getting the flavor from the, Bingo. the sour. So hate me if you want. That's I what I do. Know. That's what I do. If you're making bread, it's great. And by the way, so I do that once a week. 
Great. And I've been doing it, you know, for years, and that's, it's fine. I'm fine with it. But my, my, it's what's funny is, is that I use only uh, <clears throat> high extraction. I, you know, I make my own flour. I use right. only high extraction flour. Mm-hmm. However, my starter is only snavely soft wheat because I didn't make it for bread. I made it for pretzels. Oh, And so I keep my starter pristine for sourdough pretzels, which, by the way, in the real life are made with spent. They don't use real starter for sourdough pretzels. They use use spent and yeast. The Mm. the real folks, you know what I mean? The folks whose work I admire the most. Yeah. You know, Martins. And so then, so I'm like, who am I to argue with with that? No. Although the owner— of Ethan, owner of Martin's, at uh, at the, is started doing soft. They're going to do soft. Ooh. I don't know if they're going to continue doing soft, but he's in that love one, a soft pretzel, right? That they did full sourdough, yeah, real sourdough. And I was like, and he's like, I'm going to see if I can get the, you know, the the folks in Pennsylvania, you know, the the the, the Mennonites mm-hmm. to do instead of spent and yeast to do full sourdough. I'm like, why? Their pretzels are delicious. Yeah. Yeah, and know, they've been doing it for a billion years. This well, way, at least you know, you know hundred and something, whatever it is. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on spent? I well, so the thing <coughs> is, is I wanted my whole book to be about spent. Like, I wanted the whole book to be discarded because I got on this like, I you know, it was that point in the pandemic where it was it was early on. It was like scary to go to the grocery store, and there was like you couldn't get flour because everybody was buying it all and the supply chain, everything. So I started using the the spent, the discard in like everything. So I wanted to write an entire book about it. And the editor was like, absolutely not. That's why? so why weird. The, and why? I was like, that's my entire personality. Like, just let me do it. Well, because you end up really only going full spent on like four recipes, right? Yeah. Blintzes, muffins. You can... You can almost use the spent in almost every recipe because, except for the the actual, like, breads that require it as right, a leavener. Right. Because all the others, like, I use baking soda, baking powder, like, eggs, like, all of these things. So. Yes. So here's my question. In your biscuit recipe. Yes. You use starter, not yes. spent. And I was like, because as soon as I saw biscuit, I was like, oh, great use for spent instead of buttermilk. Yeah. Right? As in, a, all, yeah. Right? But then you use real. I was like, huh. Yeah. You could do either. And there's that little, like, conversion chart at the beginning. I felt like a little, like, like they were like, no, you can't use spent for all these recipes. And I was like, oh, damn it. Yeah. yeah. I think your editor was wrong. I don't <laughs> I don't know who it is, but I'm like, I think— you, it- know, you know, I get it. It's a little niche— it's a little niche to be, like, writing an entire book on spent. about <laughs> the stuff that you throw out. Um, but would have been very, very me, very on brand. But I but I, I always tell people that, like, so many of those recipes, that's why I put that little chart in the beginning. Because it just, you know, the density is different. Like Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you also say go by weight. So if they're doing it by volume, they yeah. should I mean, kind of no, suck it anyway, nobody right? Nobody should be baking by but, right. Like just get get a scale. Now let's talk about your pancakes in terms yes. of uh, in terms of this. So in that one, you specifically say I'm using real uh, real starter. Yeah, not spent. Yeah, on I that. want I wanted a little and whip floof. whipped egg whites. So yeah. let me just be clear because it's been a while since I've read it. Yeah. Uh, so when I'm doing waffles, you know, like Brussels style waffles, mm-hmm. right? I'll, and th- so I've read, I can't tell you how many articles I've read on waffles where people are like, you don't need to whip the egg whites. It's the same. I don't know what the hell they're doing to yeah. have it be the same. But you whip the egg whites first in, in, in Belgium, in, in Brussels, right? You whip the egg whites first, and then it's yeasted, and you're using the egg white as the, as the, as the nucleated bubble mm-hmm. for the yeast to lighten the whole thing. Yeah. So it seems counterintuitive like you wouldn't, need to whip the egg white because you're putting the egg white in and then you're not using the the batter for another hour you mm-hmm. know what i mean Cause you're mm-hmm. later. but in your pancakes is it starter and then egg white and then cook right away or like what's the what's the procedure like and you're using a very active starter you're using i mean you can use because there's also it's been a while since i've made them too <laughs> well there's also there's um there's there's baking powder in there too. Right, right, right. So um, no, but I do it once you fold in the egg whites. I just I go right into the pan. 
So, but it's a, it's a then, I can't remember how much starters. It's a relatively high proportion of starter, probably. Or yeah, 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 right. So you're getting the. It's already it's already bubbly. It's already it's got bubbly, the stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I started doing this thing with the discard like very early in the pandemic, like you know, like week two when I was like losing my my mind, where I would just take the discard and just just that and just pour it into a hot pan. With nothing. Just discard. It's delicious. Come on. No, I'm telling you, I'm going to send you pictures. No eggs? No nothing? No, nothing. Well, your crepe is all discard, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so good. I mean, I don't know. We were all in a weird place at that point, but, like, I was making, like, savory pancakes with it. I, like, I went, I went crazy. Caroline Schiff, discard queen. Thank you. That's like the nicest thing anybody's ever yeah. said to me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. <clears throat> uh, oh, by the way, we have a mutual friend in uh, and friend of the show, uh, Angela Garbutz from uh, Goldenrod, and I guess now Goldenrod Provisions in Lincoln, Nebraska. Goldenrod uh, groceries. Grocery. 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 Do you yeah. know um, that um, Nebraska? Her dad. I don't know if he still uh, was uh, like running like uh, the like something about Nebraska beef. Mm. Right, something about okay. Nebraska. Okay. I know that beef's not your thing. No, no, yeah, but, yeah. but anyway, so the, Nebraska's uh, what's it called um, motto used to be. You ready for it? They changed it to something that I refuse to remember. Right, because this is their original motto. Right, possibilities endless. Ooh, strong, right? That's so strong. Why would they change it? I don't know. They some marketing genius came up with that. Yeah, like, you know what it is? Is it like a, a new generation of people come in? Mm. And they're like, I have to do something different. Yeah. I can't be the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. It says people are wrong. Sometimes things that are the same are good. Yeah. Do you mm-hmm. know the you know the motto I, I really like? Because uh, so my my brother lives in Philly. I take the train there a lot. Um, and my my family's got a little cabin in Pennsylvania. Um, but anyway, Trenton. Oh, the right. Trenton motto. Oh, what is it? You know, I've never been to Trenton. I I'm not going to say anything about. Trenton. But <laughs> You're listen, like, it's not Camden. It's Trenton makes the world takes. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so kind of. Yeah, it's really <laughs> just like passive aggressive. Yeah. Like Trenton makes like, the world. We did takes. all this and all you do is take, take, take. So what do we take from Trenton? That's the thing. I don't know. It's like when you're driving uh, <laughs> out, out of the tunnel. What but is it's it? huge. Like the signage is huge. Like you'll see it. It's like on a bridge. Really? Wow. Is it's it, worth is taking the train just, just to, to see, see that? that. Like get on Jersey Transit. Is it Hoboken or is it Jersey City that's the embroidery capital where you see that on the bridge? Oh, embroidery I don't know. Embroidery capital. And we're like, no, really? I don't know. Really? It's just outside Hoboken. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Um, so now I need to know what Trenton makes that we're all taking from That we're from taking. Them. Like, what are we taking from Trenton? They used to make paper, violins, that they're so buttons. Wait, violin what? They're so grumpy violins, about Violins, buttons, frying oh, pans, nails, it? and carriages. Yeah, yeah quickly. Okay. Carriages. Violins. You know what? Uh, taking you know. all those violins. <laughs> right right next to you got You got your Stradivarius, and then right underneath you got, you got your Trenton. Your Trenton. <laughs> uh, it's because they, you know, whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to get into it. They make... We take. Yeah. Uh, wait. So, I, anyway, so, so, so uh, Angela, we are yeah, mutual, mutual friends. friends. She's, she's, she's good people. Wonderful. Terrific people. Love her. Uh, when the FCI closed, I sent her, I don't know if she ever used it because there's no reason for her to use it, but I sent her uh, some sugar lights that, because, uh, mm. uh, you know, because Jacques Therese was the, um, the pastry dean there and he's like a master sugar puller blower. They had a whole like isomalt and sugar technique mm-hmm. thing. And they used to have those weird French fry lamps so that you could do all the pulled oh, sugar. Yeah, and yeah. we had we had a crap ton of them. So when the FCI closed down, John and I actually went, packed up their library and I'm like, I'm gonna take one of these sugar lights and mail it to her and that's gonna be a white elephant. Oh speaking of uh uh, I'm giving you this. This is the first ever like <gasps> like and feel feel free to not take it. <laughs> But my my wife was like, it doesn't have to get thrown away, but it can't live here. Oh, but this is no, this is great. This is a, look at this. this. So this is a pro safe bagel slicer. <laughs> it holds bagels and rolls for safe slicing. Now I'll say, I did not know that was a problem until I was in college, and a friend of mine who's now like a very well respected uh, ophthalmologist, right? Oh. Which, which is you know the MD one, right? yeah, yeah. Which is weird because a psychologist is the PhD, but an ophthalmologist is the MD, and an optometrist is the PhD. Weird, right? Yeah, yeah. Weird. Psychiatrist yeah, never- is the 
is the MD, but, MD an optom- yeah. but an optometrist is the PhD, and ophthalmologist is the M- Weird. Yeah. Doesn't I never make sense. really thought about it. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. yeah. So he was in the dining hall one day, and we had the bagels and, and the bread knife, and he, he did the, he did the, I'm going to hold it like this, like a C, I'm going to cut through my hand, like, which what, he did. What a chump, though. Come on. Yeah, I know, I know. You, you hold this it like an this. This an MD? Now, this now, is... he was an undergrad. <laughs> you, you hold it like this, and you go like this, and as I've taught my kids. And so since I'm not slicing a thousand bagels in a, a, a day, and I don't care if if it's equi sized, yeah. But this will make it so that I mean I this do hate great. it when I when yeah. I, when I go off center on the bagel. It does it, sort of ruin your whole. Yeah, week. yeah. So your you you are being week. presented with a pro thank you pro safe bagel slicer. I feel slicer. like I wonder if this is like can like kids use this? Is this like I think so a kid thing? I don't, like, I don't know if you know this, but it's as easy to use anything. as one two three one open sides. <laughs> Two, place knife blade between sides on oh, top so of do, bagel. Three, slice bagel. In, involved. You, 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 yeah. you, you, the, the, the knife's not in the box. It assumes that you own a bread knife. Yeah, yeah. And I it, guess like kids aren't assumption. supposed to use bread knives. I don't yeah. know. Because I was thinking, you know, my, my niece and nephew might think this is really cool, but I don't yeah. think they should be using yeah. a, a big bread knife, you know. Well, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, it, wait, uh, and by the way. Like six and three, yeah. you know. I yeah. Don't know. Yeah. Anyway. I'm pushing it. So. Enjoy. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. I and love. I love uh, again. If a novelty. I, if I walk out and I see it in the trash, I didn't throw it away. Exactly. Yeah, yeah you'll yeah. know exactly. It's, it's well yeah. built. It's a really a well built thing. It's just what am I going to do? It, it's just going to collect dust. It's. You know what? This is going to be. Maybe. Maybe. Do you serve bagels for brunch? Do you have a brunch the, service? No. No. Mm-hmm. No. You're going to give it to someone else. Yeah. You know, but this could be the. Um, you know, it's like the sisterhood of the traveling bagel slicer. Like there you we go. Would just keep passing it, passing it on. Yeah, and, and everyone feels a little bit guilty because it's you yeah, know, it's new in box. Where did you get it? Why do you have this? It was given to me at the bagel fest when I was a judge, oh. and I was like, "Oh, this is a nice thing. I can't. I'm not going to chuck it." Yeah. No. No. I'm. It's gonna go. I'll. I'll take it. It's yeah. gonna go to a good home. All right. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Thank yeah. You're doing me a service. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Uh, let's see, do I have any more? Oh, yeah. So you mentioned several times uh, that the sourdough actually enhances things. If, okay, here's a crazy one, pie crust. You use a, uh, and it's relatively higher hydration pie crust dough. And we mm-hmm. have a pie crust question later on. We'll, we'll do that uh, when we get to it. But um, so what do you think it does? I mean, right, so in the old days, a lot of people would add some acidity to the pie crust, presumably as a gluten inhibitor, right? Yeah. So yeah. what do you think is going on with sourdough and the pie crust? So whenever I made a pie crust with sourdough, I found that it would get, like, really, like, like browned and crispy in a good way. So I really like that. Um, and flavor, you huh. know? Yeah. Is it too aerated? Is it like if you're using um, the discard and I'm the discard, yeah, yeah, queen, yeah, discard queen, you know? Because I hate, not hate. I don't like putting leavener in my pie. You know how sometimes no. people put a little no, no, leavener no. in pie. I don't like oh, it. Oh, I don't do that. So no, Who's and doing I, and that? I, people, some people, they, they do that. Look, I had to read all the pie stuff, yeah. all the pie stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah, well, there's a pie question later. We'll get to it. So I'm just curious okay. what you thought the the effect was. Yeah, I think it's flavor, and I and I find that it really browns and gets like super crispy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that. And uh, so what was it? What was the other question I had made off the... See, in the book, and now I'm rethinking the entire book based on what you're saying, basically, with the exception of things like the pull-apart bread. Right, or the focaccia, right. things like that. Can I tell something terrible? Yeah. Everyone loves focaccia. I, l- I only like it. Oh, I love it. I know. Everyone loves it. What, I what? only like it. But, uh, but to call you out from the book, you don't like banana bread. I hate banana... Bananas in general. Oh, in general. Ugh. Ah, so what was the flavor you added to banana bread to make it tolerable for you? Well, I, and even so, it's still like, ugh. I really was, I added coffee and hazelnuts. Okay, okay. Just trying to mask But do you the, like hazelnut in editor, your coffee? Because I hate flavored coffee. I don't like flavored coffee either, yeah. no. And I don't even, I'm like a, I just love a good drip coffee. Oh, yeah? I even will drink, like, I like, there's like, like bodega coffee. It has like a nostalgia to it. Hey, you know who you would like? Is Nastasia the Hammer Lopez, <laughs> who does not like a well-made cup of coffee? Am I right, Nastasia? That is it. true. Yeah, yeah. She uh, does, uh, neither does neither does Nick Coleman. Really? 
Mr. Mr. Oily, yeah. Mr. Mr. I love uh, I love the world's finest olive oils. Enjoys a crappy cup of coffee, doesn't huh? Care. Well, I just yeah, it doesn't just care. it just well, there's a difference between not caring and aggressively not caring. <laughs> You're like my grandpa in who aggressively liked jug wine from California instead of like the good stuff, and you're like that way with coffee. You aggressively don't want good coffee, right? Yeah. 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 I just I I you know, I don't know if I'm like that. But, like, I think there's a time and place for, like, you know, just a bad cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Well, I don't know. You're, you, you look, uh, again, like, you need it for the caffeine. Here's, here's my thing. Uh, going back to, uh, you know, what we hope doesn't happen to Nastasia and happen to uh, Jack Inslee is that, uh, you know, like, drip coffee doesn't get my motor run in the same way espresso does. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Headed on the highway, looking for yeah. adventure. Um, <laughs> another interesting thing I noticed in the book is that you did a uh, you did a a tea, uh, an Earl Grey tea. I forget what you yeah. put. It, I forget what you. Was it, a, it was a bun, right? Yeah. But here's what's interesting: you infuse it into the butter mm-hmm. instead of into the liquid, the non sourdough liquid aspect of it. And and so is that so that you don't get the astringency? You get the flavor without the astringency? What made you put it into the butter and then put it on the, uh, uh, like, into the in-between Well, but layer? it's also it's also in um, the dough. So it's in the dough and in the yeah, butter? Yeah, like the whole tea leaves, like, ground up really fine. It's in the dough. And then I added it to the butter because um, browning the butter and it's, like, hot liquid and it would really extract... All of that flavor. Right. But I bet it's a different kind of a flavor because there's no water in it at that point. It's all the no. fat. So it's like yeah. this, like it's like it's all the fat soluble stuff. So it's gotta yeah. be an interesting flavor. It's an interesting yeah. technique. Yeah. You, so you, is that one of your I, you like that recipe? Yeah, I love that recipe. I love that flavor of Earl Grey, Bergamot. Like I just I, I think it's great. I enjoy Bergamot. It's really delicious. Bergamot's good. Yeah. Good we have a food. we have a ton of Bergamot at work right now. We're oh my god, through. so expensive. Jesus We're going fresh. Through, no, yes, but so we got, expensive. We got it. I got a deal. We got it. I got a deal. Yeah. I got a hookup. I got a guy. I got a Bergamot guy. It is the time of year. So like uh one year, uh, you know, Bobby at the uh, at the bar, he was like, I got a guy who can get bergamot. This guy, I forget the guy's name, but he's like the the weird fruit and weird blah blah guy. Mm-hmm. He's like, You want some bergamot? Yeah. He's like, Okay. And then shows up the next day with a backpack full of bergamot and a bill for like $250. And I was like, oh, what? <laughs> what? You know what I mean? Because the stuff doesn't yeah. last. So no. then we, we juiced it all. Like, yeah. blah, 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 juiced it, clarified it, made cordial. And then we took all the peels and made bergamot bitters. Mm. So what are you doing with it? Uh, so I make like an oil with it, like the the peel. We do like an uh, like an oleo just with like sugar yeah. and let it, let it, you know, sweat it out, you know? Um, and then I mix that with equal parts olive oil, and that gets that's one of the garnishes on the cheesecake. Um, I also candy a bunch of the peels. How do you can like? Are you a and then are you a, are you a hard savory, candy or a soft candy peel person? Um, soft candy, like I do it like in syrup for Ooh. a while. Mm. It's real. It's almost like it's not marmalade, but it's like. Gooey and so not that chewy dehydrated stuff. The stuff no, that takes like no, four no. syrups or five syrups or six, whatever many syrups it takes to get it to the right. Yeah, and we use a little bit of the the actual fruit on the cheesecake, and then savory is using a lot of it for a savory dish. So, kind of like if I see savory, like you know, supreming it, I take all the peels. Mm. You know, we just we use the whole thing. Get off my bergamot, jerk! Yeah, is that what you say. Uh, so do you do you water blanch the peel first? Do they I still do. do that? Yeah, yeah, I do. I like to Pull do that. Pull a little bit of the bitter out? Yeah. 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 But enough of the oil stays that it, it still has like a oh, lot of flavor. Yeah, totally. Right? Yeah. Totally. Any, is there any use? There's no use for the blanche water, right? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Yeah. I mean, you could drink it if you were weird. You could but. drink it. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could drink it. Uh, all right. Uh, Austin Gibbs writes in, uh, is there a quick and delicious cake sponge recipe that you have, preferably one that can be baked in a quarter sheet pan and ready to be iced in under 45 minutes? I'll even take a simple flour sugar egg ratio as well. And uh, Austin also wants to know what's the best way. Wait, let's do this one first and then we'll do the pie crust mm. question. Let's do this one first. It's not. <sighs> I don't know if I have one off the top of my head. I feel like most cakes and I. I will say I love an oil-based cake. 
I saw that from your, uh, there's a question I about really your confetti cake thing. You do. You I love an oil-based cake because um, they just, they stay so like moist. Well, I noticed also. And it's real easy. You just, you're just whisking in, you know. Right. So when you do your oil-based cake, at least on the internets, you do it with a whip and not mm-hmm. with a paddle. Mm-hmm. And so do you feel that you don't need the extra aeration that you would get out of butter, sugar, creaming because you're using a whisk instead of a paddle. Yeah, Is yeah. that what you think? I, yeah, like I whip in plenty of air and then into the the egg and the sugar. Then I emulsify in the oil, like almost like you're making a mayonnaise and then, you know, add your dry ingredients from there. Um, and it just, I think it makes an amazing cake. That's how we make like the coconut cake, Gage and Tolmer. It's an oil-based cake, and um, it just—it's like super moist and supple. Is it a—is it a coconut oil, or are you using? A- I used—I tried both, and I actually liked it better with just like a neutral. Yeah, because the coconut the problem oil. is you have to kind of warm it to get it to go in. Yeah, and then if you are serving it, like if the cake is like not, uh, you know, on the warm side, it can be really hard because uh-huh. coconut oil. Yeah, it is. You know. Um, but anyway, so I, I would just choose like an oil-based cake. And, you know, most cakes should not, if you're doing a, you know, quarter sheet, I mean, you should be out of the oven in like, you know, half an hour. And what do they want? And they, but, yeah, but they want to ice it. Oh, well, you got to let it cool. You can't. Right, what do you think? What do you think about... Uh, what do you think about throwing it into? Uh, I mean, the problem is you're ruining everything else in your in your. If you have a walk-in, yeah. it's easy because you can just be like, oh, "Crap on you, people!" You throw it in there and flash it off. You know right. what I mean? Or but like, like at home, deep freezer. Yeah, you're kind of. You know what you need to do? I feel Austin, like you're, you're go not buy a blast to, freezer. Yeah. Are you rich, Austin? Are you rich? <laughs> go buy a blast. Yeah, freezer. Yeah, just buy a blast freezer. Don't yeah. you wish? Don't you <clears throat> wish that like someone would make a reasonable blast freezer, like a small yeah, one, yeah. like reasonable. You know what I mean? Like, And by reasonable, I mean like a grand. You know yeah. what I mean? Like something that you could like... Like one can't. that you could have at home? You want yeah. one at home? Yeah, yeah. What would be like, you know, your like dream appliance that you would have at home? That I... That you don't have. That I don't have. Yeah, like something ridiculous. You know, a ridiculous. You know what my son Dax wants yesterday? Mm. He was, I was doing more French fry tests yesterday because every once in a while I'm like, I'm going to try some new French fry techniques. <laughs> and so yesterday I did that. And he was like, Dad, why don't you make crinkle cut fries? And I'm like, yeah, because, why don't you? Because I'm not that jerk sitting there going, shunk, <laughs> shunk, 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 <laughs> rotate, shunk, shunk, shunk. He's like, that's how you have to do it? I'm like, unless you got, you know, 50 grand to drop on a, on a crinkle cut machine. He's like, Let's buy one. Fill the whole house. I'm like, Dax, no. So that's what he wants. I don't know. But what do I want? He's got a good point. Yeah. I, I mean, like, but a crinkle crut, think about it, people. Every French fry, reasonable French fry machine is cut straight at once. And a crinkle cut requires being cut from a 90 degree angles twice. Mm-hmm. You can't crinkle cut something a single time. It is not a push through situation because right. it just ain't. That's not how it works. Yes. But what would I have? John, I don't know. John, yeah. what would, this is an interesting question. John, what would you have? Uh, um, I don't know. I mean, I live in a studio apartment. It's like a nice stove with a good no. oven. Mm. It's, mm. it's simple. Oh, I know right what now. I would want. What yeah. do you want, Stas? A dishwasher. That's what I want. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> if, if, if I was going to change the dishwasher I have, my dream that doesn't exist is a dishwasher that you could flip it between residential and commercial modes so yeah. that it, it could do like a minute and mm-hmm. a half wash and you know you're burning electricity and all that but then all of a sudden it would like it could be a normal washing machine yeah. again a commercial dishwasher oh. would be amazing oh yeah 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 hell on your dishes but oh my god so fast oh yeah and when you have people over your house or whatever and you have that god. pile of freaking dishes Worst. yeah and then you're like no it's fine go home yeah. And then but, that's it. But, and the thing is, like, I don't want anybody else to do my dishes because, mm. like, they're going to do them wrong. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yes. So it's like, I'm annoyed that I have this huge stack of dishes to do, but I don't want the help. Wow. You know? Yeah. Because I don't want you to mess it up. 
I'll again, just have to do it again. The correct answer, just get See? rich. Just get rich. Try it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Austin also wants to know, uh, what's the best way to achieve? I don't know what they, I don't know what they mean because they say, achieve an only tender, I guess they mean only tender, not flaky. Is it just by adding more fat and treating the crust almost like a shortbread cookie? I've been thinking about recreating the Burger King apple pie. You probably never had it. I never have because yeah. I went to McDonald's. I never had a no, Burger oh, King apple pie. I didn't know Burger King had an apple pie. Me neither. Uh, you probably never had it, but the crust was super tender, and I actually prefer it over the traditional flaky crust found in most American apple pies. Go, like, what do you think? Go, go brise or something? Yeah, it sounds almost like it would be like a... Yeah, like brise, like almost like a short crust, you know, shortbread, but you would put in, you would, yeah. you would have some egg in there. As a, Just like don't leave, like get all the fat incorporated. Yeah. Right? And like low low water, all the fat incorporated. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, sheet it out. Yeah. And just be very careful with it. And yeah. That's what I think. You know, you know who talks about this uh, ad nauseum is uh, uh, Monroe Boston Strauss, right, John? Oh, God, yeah. 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 But I'm not going to get into that because uh, Nastasia will murder me. <laughs> well, Caroline, are you familiar with who that is? No, I don't know. Should no. we be getting into it? No. We'll, we'll no. say it after the show. We'll say it after the show. We'll say it after the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's, we'll talk about it later. He's, yes. my, he's, my, he's my pie guru. He, he dead. Oh. Yeah. He's been dead a long time. Oh, it's fine. Okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, Christian Sacco writes in, question for Caroline. I loved your Munchies birthday cake video a few years back. Oh, Which, that was quite a long time ago. Well, uh, they would like surprised to... surprised it's still out there. They, they say it's quite a go. popular video. Oh, huh. I looked at it. It's Munchies got, is no yeah. more. Really? Yeah. Vice Munchies? I don't think it's... Ex I think it folded. Really? No, Where they're they, still uploading. Oh, they are? Okay. They're still uploading. Okay. Uh, no, I, I just heard, you know, because there were all the, the... I think there were layoffs. I, I, I don't know. Well, that doesn't mean they stopped doing yeah, stuff. Yeah, it just yeah, means yeah, that yeah, they're yeah. getting chat GPT to do yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, uh, Quinn, you didn't say what your piece of kitchen equipment is. Yeah, thanks for asking. Um, I would get a freeze dryer. I have one. You want Ooh. me to ship it to you? I don't have that much money to ship you this freeze dryer. And what was, are you doing with a freeze dryer? Why do you? It was that? given to me by uh, Alex Naki from Ideas and Food, who mm -hmm. got it from a guy named Milken from Boston, and it's really old. It works. We got it working, and I brought it to the bar, but it's big. It's yeah. big. If I was going to do it, I would get the the one that's meant for preppers. There's one that's a couple grand that's meant for preppers, and it's just right. kind of plug and play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just in case. Yeah. yeah. Have you been watching The Last of Us? No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do they, but it, it's a great show. Yeah. It's a great show. So good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. There's the a fungus episode. among us. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking that could be a really good Halloween costume for me. Uh, like uh, one of those like one clicker, cordyceps things? Yeah. 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 Anyway. All right. Uh, so, popular video. Still popular. Hundreds of thousands of views. Uh, Great. As of this morning. Uh, and I'm curious how that video, how or if, that video affected the trajectory of your career and the career of your uh, famous, they say, infamous hair. Oh, infamous. Um... I think, I mean, I think all of these opportunities that, you know, I've had over the years has, have, have, uh, you know, slowly but surely contributed to my career and, you know, it's really nice to, to get recipes out there and see people make them. It's always like a little scary too. It's always like, I have like a ton of self-doubt and imposter syndrome where like I do something and then I'm like, what if it doesn't work? Or, you know, what if I'm, I'm you know, totally wrong, you know, how embarrassing, but, um, right, I, which is, which is bad, but isn't that better than, than not being aware that you need to constantly be good? Cause I right. have the same thing. It's th like, it's you con thing. you're just constantly figuring stuff out. Isn't that and better like, though? Yeah. Yeah. I guess it is. Than being like, I know, know everything I'm right all the time. Cause I'm <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that's, I mean, it's, it's great to know that that's, you know, still out there and Anyway. Okay, so I have a question based mm. on this video, uh, other than the ones we've already talked about with oil and, and whatnot. Uh, so I think the average, and by that I mean like almost everybody when they're making an icing at home now, just does butter and, and powdered sugar. Ugh. Why? Because it's soup dupes easy, right? Ugh. Right? And I you're hate doing, it. you're doing a cooked, you're doing a, like yeah. a cooked, cooked meringue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's, is it, is it the, the texture of, 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 Kind of the quick that you hate the oversweetness, and if it's oversweetness, have you tried like 
doing that thing where you add like ultra spurs instead of powdered sugar to, to cut it down or or you say just make the because it's not that much harder. Right? No, it's not that much harder. It's everything. It's the texture. It's the over sweetness, but also like a you know Swiss meringue buttercream Italian meringue buttercream. It's really stable because of those egg whites. So you can. You know, in terms of frosting a cake, you can really futz with it. You can, it can be kind of hot out and it's not going to just totally melt right away. I mean, eventually it will, but like there's a stability there. And um, that texture is just amazing. I just think it's, I, I can't. Right. With so, the, the powdered sugar and the butter, it's just not. So I don't think I like icing. And you're telling, what are you telling me? That's mainly because most of what I'm getting is is something that you think is like a subpar icing. Because it's kind of taken over the world. The, bow- the powdered sugar butter is taking yeah. over the world. I get that it's really easy, and like I I totally understand that like people are not going to be wanting to like make like you know softball sugar syrup at home and right. and standing there with the thermometer. Like I I get it. I get it. Um, but I don't know. Maybe it's like bad coffee where it has its time and place. <laughs> so another uh, another one that I don't think anyone makes anymore because like, you know, the, the meringue icing is one thing, but like the old school American boiled icing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But that that to me is kind of those. I, I do love a boiled icing. That's similar to me because you're you're heating the sugar. You're getting it to a certain stage, you know? Right, right. But just yeah. n- nobody takes those t- the time to do that no, anymore. Like, icing's always the afterthought. Yeah. It's the color in the icing's the important thing. Mm. You know? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, all right. So, I'm going to think now you're making me think more about icing. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right. From uh, Daniel Ramirez. Uh, well, this was to me before this, but we can talk about uh, gluten and different flour strengths. They want me to talk about it for as long as humanly possible, which mm. isn't that long. So let me get to this other question. It's not yeah. really a question. So we have a longtime listener who's just mentioning, well, so there's a question. Uh, Ken Ingber, I think is from Boston, Boston area, uh, was watching, uh, re-watching, uh, remember Baking with Julia? Julia Child, remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So uh, one of the episodes had uh, a person, uh, Danielle Forestier, who was doing um, baguettes, mm-hmm. right? So this is circa 1997. We're okay. By the way, okay. I looked up and as of the pandemic, she's still alive, which is, well, you know, yeah, doing right. well. Great. Yeah, doing well. Uh, say, so years ago, I saw Danielle Forestier baking. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce her name. Baking on Baking with Julia. I can't remember if she said it was between six and seven hundred, between seven hundred and eight hundred times when you're making a baguette, you need to lift the dough and slam it mm-hmm. on the, on the countertop. She actually said eight to eight hundred and fifty. I watched it this morning. Uh, Slam it on the bench many hundreds of times. The slamming enhances the gluten structure, she said. I myself tried it and got to the sixth slam when my wife called down from upstairs and said, I don't know what you're doing, but you need to knock it off now. Hmm. I know slamming figures in hand-pulled noodles as well, so maybe there's something to it. Uh, what are my thoughts? And so basically the question is about uh, the slap and fold in general yeah. versus no need. And, and just to set it, set the scene, because again, I watched it and you know I, I didn't give you the opportunity to do that, but... Uh, so she's doing a very short fermentation because mm-hmm. she's doing kind of a classic baguette. So she's using a very high protein bread flour. She, yep. she mixes it together into a dough, waits, and then puts cake yeast into it, mm-hmm. folds that in, then does her kneading on an already semi like hydrated dough. So it's already started the gluten structure. And then it's only getting like a one and a, one, one and a half hour rise before she does her forming. And then she does a relatively long second proof. So if that helps... Yeah. Answer or point to why she might need to like do all the slap or rap a ding dong because there's not a lot of time involved and yeah. she's doing one loaf so she doesn't she can't manipulate big. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah, to, to I I think of it like, you know, you know any other like loaf of bread where you want to create that gluten, but I don't know, maybe she was just uh doing it for the spectacle. I mean, her stuff puffed up. Her stuff puffed up big. I mean, look, it's the it's the it's the kneading is where the air goes into it, right? right? And if she's using this is my feeling. If she's using bread flour, right? It's actually the gluten gets tough enough early enough with that on a single loaf that how are you gonna? You can't really just pull it and fold it over. You get that thing where you're just pushing on the dough. Right. It's just going to push back against you. Right. So yeah. she's like going like whap. Huh. You know, and it's like getting longer 
and she's yeah. getting a full, f she's getting an actual fold. So she's actually putting more air into it. Interesting. It's my guess from yeah. looking at it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I mean, uh, they didn't have her camera on the whole time. 800 seems excessive. I that think seems maybe she's excessive. Big. That's a lot. Yeah. That's like beaten biscuit kind of situation. Uh, yeah. Which I've tried to make, and that's different, but you're beating the bejesus out of those yeah. things. Yeah. And then, you know, she lets it rise. Then she cuts it, lets it rest so she can form it. And she does the good, I mean, yeah. good technique. She does yeah. it full, full French. But it's so funny that, like, back then in the late 90s, like, and that's still to this day, I think, the, the way that French baguettes are made because they're pretty codified, right? And nowadays, everyone's like, a loaf of bread that you make in just a couple of hours? Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, everyone, a loaf now of bread like, needs oh, to think. it's yeah. three days yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Long, cold ferment. I mean, there's the really the answer is is that there's like so many ways to do things and get great results. Yeah, is what I think I've learned over the past. You know. Yeah, don't get hung up. Decade and a half is like if you find a way that something works for you and you like it, that's legit and it's good. Yeah, and that's, don't don't worry about it. I, I feel that way. Uh, I feel that way as well. Um, all right. So, uh, oh, by the way, Quinn, do we have any more? Because uh, there's a lot of questions we're not going to get to in four minutes. Do we have any more uh, pastry-related ones other than the flour one that we should get to? Uh, no, we can just go back to the, to the flour one. All right. Uh, so, in the book, and I understand this. In fact, I have a section in the book that maybe I'll never finish because I'm working on something else right now. But I will finish it mm -hmm. on cooking. Uh, on, oh, by the way. The reason I have these two disgusting band-aids yeah. on it. Was it from bagel slicing? No, get this. Get this. <laughs> I'm, I'm, so, I'm so mad about it, and I think you'll be mad about it too. Maybe John will be mad about it. So uh, when you're steaming, right, if you don't have a combi oven, right. the best way to steam is in hotel pans, yep. right, with, with uh, steamer inserts. Yep. That's why they call them freaking steamer inserts, mm -hmm. or what, I don't know what they call them. That's what I call them. Yeah, that's what I would call them. But yeah. but I, I built this thing that I can. I have cooling racks that fit the hotel pan size cooling racks, right? Oh, and so then nice. I can stack. Th I can stack three of them because I built little spacers, so I can stack mm -hmm. three racks in a single perf pan, and, and put a lid on it, and so I can steam a lot in a single hotel pan. Yeah. Right. And so I'm like, I'm smart. Right, and so I'm doing French fries because the problem when you're doing French fries, you boil them for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, they fall apart, and right. so people are like, "But they taste the best." So I've I've taken to steaming them. Oh, Get this, I'm smart. now here's the test I'm running. Right, I'm steaming them without soaking them because Dax likes full potato flavor, and when you soak the potatoes, they don't have as much potato flavor. Right, right. Like, they get darker because you don't get rid of the sugars, but he doesn't care. And so, like, I've been trying to do no-soak methods. Mm -hmm. So I cut them, and I steam them instantly for a long time. They don't break up. I let them cool, right? Okay. And you, obviously, you got to spray the rack with, with grease or the potatoes stick to it, you know, when you— Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I'm like— you know, I can't see without glasses. I can see far, but I can't see close, okay. right? Yeah. So I do my steaming. I've done my first fry. As I'm doing the first fry, I'm cleaning my racks, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I soap up the rack because I have put grease on it, right? Mm -hmm. So I have to soap the rack. And I go, shoomp, shoomp, shoomp with my hand. And there's a burr. No. There's a burr on the, and it just goes, foom, and the blood just starts shooting into the sink because it cuts right to the, who puts burrs on their cooling racks? I don't know. You just grated. You, like, cheese yes. grated your fingers. I was like, what the hell? That's the worst. So, I, I, like, I'm holding my hand, and, the, and I call my wife over. I'm like, what the hell? And she looks at it, and she's like, yeah. Yeah, maybe you should wear glasses when you cook. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sucked. Anyway, sorry about that. That's, yeah. You know. And then these goofy things, I mean, they stick better than they, regular Band-Aids, yeah. but, you know, I'm not you know. cooking professionally. I don't have to put finger cots on it. Yeah. Yeah. But. Hey, can I tell you, before I get into flour, another another thing? Mm. So, like, uh, John, mm -hmm. right here behind me. Yep. So, his his carbonara recipe at his uh -huh. restaurant, carbonara is delicious at his restaurant. Okay. Uh, what did I make it with? I made it with I didn't I didn't use he uses guanciale because he's a fancy weasel. I used I just used the crappy supermarket pancetta because I'm a bad person. But he uses an unconscionably large number of egg yolks. Yeah, mm. no whole egg at all. Right, just mm. something like on the order of a dozen eggs per pound of of uh, we did the calculations. A dozen <laughs> eggs per pound of of uh, of pasta. Correct. I think so. Sounds about right. One okay. dozen egg yolks yeah. per pound of. So I'm making three quarters of a pound. So I use like 10 egg yolks. I'm like, well, 
what takes 10 egg whites? And the answer is an angel food cake takes 10 egg whites. Yeah. Yeah. So I was making an angel food cake. So you want to see the, my, my latest thing? So I used to make an angel food cake every week. Mm-hmm. About. Uh, angel food cake every week. Uh, this is in the 90s, right? Because I like angel food cake a lot. Even yeah. Even though, like, in general, I like full fat things, but I like angel food cake. Yeah. And I haven't made one in a long time. But I started making them again. And you so see what you think of my new thing that I do. Ready? I put in, as I'm whipping the egg yolk, I put egg white. I put in the sugar uh-huh. and a cream of tartar. Are you are you a cream of tartar person or not? Are you any acid in your egg white or not? Um, at work, no, because we're just it's like so fast in and out. In yeah. and out but at home, yes. Okay. I whip into the egg whites after after they're like not quite stiff. They're in between, mm-hmm. like they're you know mm-hmm. glossy. But they, half a jar of freaking jelly. Yes, nice. And it gets stiff as. Fudge. It gets what? so stiff and it's so stable, and that the cakes bake up yeah, really nicely, nice. and they have it, and they're flavored like the jelly. What flavor are you using? I've used raspberry. I've used strawberry. I think raspberry sounds great. Yeah, I mean, the great. seeds are, but like I like the seeds. Yeah, this, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, but the point is, is like that's my that's my new that's my new technique. I'm like, why have I not been whipping jelly into my whites? Because it's just pectin. You're just adding stability to your whites yeah. and deliciousness. Yeah, it's anyway. great. Uh, Love it. So, uh, in the 57 seconds we have left, your book, uh, and uh, Daniel, I'm going to go more into it later, when, but your book uses mainly all-purpose. I'm assuming your editor also said don't use any fancy yep. flowers. Do yep. you use fancy flowers at work or at home? Yes. I, I will tell you what I use at work is a combination of uh, all-purpose, King Arthur, and then we have some cake flour, and then we use some farmer ground high extraction, rye, whole wheat bread flour. Yeah. So all different flowers, different for different things. Which King Arthur or do you use? We use the um, the Sir Galahad. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I actually think that the best cake flower is the Pura Snow brand. Yeah, I. But yeah. It, so you buy it in the, in the, the do they? I only see that in boxes. You can buy the fifties of that you or buy a fifty pounder. Yeah, you know, right I, from I went Baldor. to Jetro. Oh, really? From Baldor? I went mm-hmm. to Jetro recently, and they actually had some decent flowers. I don't know yeah, if they had that. Yeah, they do. Uh, you Hit know what? Or miss at Jetro. You never know. Uh, it's true. The uh, also, I went for the first time. Place. It's it's insane. The most physically rude people. It's the best place in New York to get into a fight for sure. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, get yeah. slammed into with those oh. Uba. This it's this nuts. dude like literally almost runs into my wife with this damn thing in line. I'm yeah. like, dude, she is stationary. What the hell are you doing? No, no, it's lawless. Cooking issues. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. 